You know what you need to play video games? Game controllers. Every console has different controllers. Some are really standard and comfortable and others are like the Wii Remote. Controllers are really complex because they need to make sure all games can be played with it while also assuring it's comforting for longer play sessions. But I wanted to take a look at my personal favorite controllers I used and keep in mind I haven't used every controller ever so maybe in the future we can get back to this topic but the ones I own I've been using extensively over the last month. So let's get into the list. Number 5 the Wii U gamepad. Okay, this might be a weird choice and most people wouldn't agree, but this controller is so comfortable and really interesting that I had to place it here. The controller is basically a thicker switch. I mean it makes sense, the Wii U is the predecessor of the switch after all. It's a controller with a screen, which I mean it is used in some interesting cases like in Nintendo Land, but in most cases it isn't even used or barely used. It doesn't even have a great battery life, around 4 hours, but keep in mind that this controller has a whole flipping screen built into it. The comfortability is surprisingly high, because it is so large combined with the fact that it has good grips, it feels pretty good to hold and therefore landing on number 5. Number 4, the GameCube controller. This controller might seem odd at first with its weird button layout, but it makes sense when you take a better look at it. A is the main button you'll be using the most, therefore it is so large and in the middle, with B being a little bit smaller besides that and the X and Y buttons surrounding the A button. It's a bit of a weird layout, but if you play with it long enough you'll easily understand it. Besides the weird button layout, it also does have pressure sensitive shoulder buttons used in games like Super Mario Sunshine. There are a few complaints I have about this controller though. The D-pad is a tad too small for my liking, although it isn't really used in a whole lot of games. And people also complain about the small size of the C-stick. And although I'm not going to disagree entirely with those people, the C-stick is still pretty usable. Well for 3D games this controller might be as well golden for them. 2D games though... This controller is absolute hell. It's nearly impossible to play 2D games normally on the Wii Virtual Console for example. You can do it, but you have to use something that is called the claw technique. It's where you use your thumb and your index finger simultaneously on the right side of the controller. I don't recommend this, but if you really have to... But besides that, the GameCube itself almost doesn't have any 2D games, so this is a smaller issue than I made it out to be. Number 3, the DualShock 4. This is the main controller for the PlayStation 4, and it's the first time that Sony changed her design in like 15 years, and it was definitely necessary. The DualShock 3 was just modern tech and an old design, and the DualShock 4 certainly changed everything about the old controllers. It has way too many features, so it has a light bar which is pretty useless, and a touch bar and motion controls are pretty handy, but stack up to a really bad battery life around 4 hours. The sticks of the DualShock 4 are also pretty fragile and the plastic can tear off pretty easily. There is a solution though in the form of these little pieces you wouldn't want to put in your mouth. I have also noticed that in a few games the light bar coincides with actions you do. Like if you die in Uncharted the light bar turns yellow. It's a pretty cool feature, but again, not necessary at all. Probably also the reason they removed from the DualSense. Number 2, the Xbox Series S and X controller. When I first picked up this controller, I was a bit worried. There are these dents in the stick I didn't really like at first. The grips had some weird anti-slip mechanism or something, I didn't really enjoy it. But when I spent a few hours with the controller, I realized that all those little complaints I had were making this controller as comfortable as it is. I also wanted to talk about these triggers. Hot oh, damn are they nice to press down. I swear, whenever I was in a loading screen, I would just continuously press down these triggers for no goddamn reason. Just because they are so nice to press. The D-pad was also a little bit off-putting for me, looking like I wouldn't really enjoy it. But I also really enjoy this. So everything I just said was actually so positive that I considered putting it on number one. 
but there is one major flaw with this controller we cannot simply overlook. The controller doesn't have rechargeable batteries. Sure, you can easily find them online, but the controller does come with two AA batteries that have a lifespan around 40 hours, which is pretty lengthy. But come on, it's 2022, why don't they just ship with rechargeable batteries? I mean, the 6-axis controller from 2007 had rechargeable batteries. Like, come on, Microsoft. Number one, the Switch Pro Controller. This is by far my favorite controller, with, of course, the Xbox Series SX controller coming pretty close. Besides the Switch being my currently most used console, I of course use this controller all the time and I have never had a problem with it. The buttons are way bigger than the Joy-Con, the triggers are flawless and the controller overall is really nice for longer play sessions. The only thing I can complain about is the wonky D-pad which sometimes just doesn't really work as well as other times, but usually you can just use a stick instead. And the controller is 70 bucks, but besides that, it's an excellent controller overall. And those were my top 5 controllers. Feel free to leave your top 5 down in the comments below. And again, maybe if I have used more controllers in the future, we can revisit this topic again. But for now, thank you for watching, and see you next time.